CataractCoach.com. This sign indicates weak Zongler support. So what should we do differently in this case? And there's that subtle sign. Let me show you the surgery. So we think it's a pretty routine cataract surgery. The patient's a little myopic, but no prior trauma. We make our incision here. At the pre-op exam, everything looked normal. Filling the anterior chamber here with our anesthetic. This is preserved free lidocaine cut 50-50 with balanced salt solution. And now here's an important part. We're filling the anterior chamber with a dispersive viscoelastic. And we get that wave, and that creates a cast, essentially, filling the AC completely. So now the volume of viscoelastic is the same as the volume of the whole anterior chamber. So, of course, make our main incision now. And as we start at the rexus, which is coming up shortly, you're going to see that subtle sign. So, here comes the forceps. We're going to do our rexus, and look what happens here. As we start to the rexus, the nucleus pushes down, and the AC deepens a little bit. And as we do the rexus, look what happens. Aqueous comes from underneath the iris, and you can see the edge of that viscoelastic to aqueous interface. That's the subtle sign. So that means the AC volume increased, the AC deepened while we're creating the capsular rexus. That means weak zonger support. And that's why that little bit of aqueous came out from under the iris. So what we're going to do now is speed up the video so we can get through all of it, but nice and easy on the hydro dissection. And you can see we touch the center of the nucleus and it seems like it's a little weak. We do a hydrodelineation, spinning the nucleus and put more viscoelastic to recoat the endothelium. And of course, we're gonna do a variation of chop here. And the key is to not put pressure on the capsule bag. So we can very carefully perform our chop technique, but first let's lift up that iris and fix that reverse pupillary block. And so now FACO probe goes in, there's the chopper, and we get two halves. I'm gonna bring the first half out of the capsule bag completely. And let me emulsify it here at the iris plane. So we emulsify it at the iris plane so we're not putting any pressure on the capsule bag itself. Now, is there a role for a capsule tension ring in this case? I don't know if it'll provide any benefit because the patient doesn't have any focal area of zonular weakness. It's just global. And so we're cleaning up now and time for the cortex removal. And it looks pretty good. Watch what happens with the infusion going in. Again, you get that reverse pupillary block with that lens iris retropulsion syndrome. And so cleaning up our cortex here. And we're looking at the rexus edge as we perform this. You want to make sure that the caps rexus edge isn't moving. Think about it. If the rexus edge moves as you're doing the cortex removal, that means very weak zonal support, or you may even be breaking the zonals more. So filling up our bag, let's put the lens in. Here comes the IOL, that looks great. We're gonna place a single piece acrylic lens in the bag and I think the patient should have a normal outcome here. Note there's no, there was no phacodenesis to begin with and I think we're not gonna have any pseudo phacodenesis either. So again, tending up that iris to equilibrate the pressure in the anterior chamber and posterior chamber. And now let's take out all the viscoelastic. The case proceeds pretty normally at this point. So I want to emphasize that subtle sign to you. You filled the anterior chamber with viscoelastic completely. So at the beginning of the case, the AC volume was exactly the same as the volume of viscoelastic you placed. But then as we start the capsular axis, we notice that the nucleus deepens, the AC deepens, the nucleus goes backwards. And that allows the AC volume to increase, so it gets filled in by that aqueous that was hidden underneath the iris. And that's that edge of the aqueous to viscoelastic that you can see so clearly at the beginning of this case. That's our subtle sign here. So at the end here, we've got a nice overlap of the rexus on top of that optic, and the patient's going to have a beautiful outcome. Tune into cataractcoach.com. I'm giving you all the secrets that I've learned all the subtleties that I figured out over the last 20 plus years, and I'm going to teach them to you. And it's totally free.